really honored to have in studio tonight the cast and crew from the 18-hour film. Now, this film is one of those films that really highlights um, the issues that we're facing, one of the critical issues in this country, which is healthcare. And this film will engage us critically in order for us to ask the real questions. But sometimes I wonder, are we asking the real questions or we've really settled for mediocrity and said, on a journey, Ajay? Kama siko msiku sana ni sawa sija kufa ama kama siku kufia kwa hao ama sija kufia kwa line ya eh, casualty ni sawa unajua but then what happens when you know when things hit the fan for lack of a better phrase um you know we saw there was a gentleman named Alex who almost I mean who spent hours in an ambulance and later lost his life and this movie is actually derived from that uh, from that uh, episode of an experience that happened at the Kenyatta National Hospital. And in studio tonight, we have the 18-hour film crew. Yeah, I don't want to introduce most of them because I know them, but um, I'm tempted to. Can I? Go ahead. No, <laughs> <laughs> you, no you go ahead. Uh, cool. Uh, my name is Nick Ndeda. I play the role of Zach, mm -hmm. um, who's a rookie paramedic, okay. who actually went through 18 hours with a casualty, and it's... It's one of those trips that's it's it's metaphorical, it's also literal, and it really puts a test on his faith um, and his strength. And uh, I'd like to think his 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 hope in humanity. Okay, and uh, before before we check out what the film is all about, there's a beautiful lady next to you. What's your name, girl? My name is Sue Anjiro. Yeah. I play Sabina, uh -huh. uh, the wife to the victim. Okay. Uh, it was a very emotional um, character and uh, role, but we'll talk about it. Okay, yeah. next to you. Uh, my name is Brian Ogola, and I play Mark in the film. He is a partner to Zach, uh, a paramedic in this whole audio. Okay. Yeah. And my name is Njue Kevin. I'm the writer and director of the film. And I'm happy to be here to share for the first time the movie. You're the Shonda Rhimes. <laughs> <laughs> next to you. My name is Bill Jones Safwani. Um, Bill the Jones. Film, yeah, Bill Jones. Yeah, oh. the film. Bill Jones, you know, oh, like Calligraph Jones. <laughs> no, 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 like uh, Bill, Bill Jones. Jones. <laughs> yeah, Bill Jones. Oh. Keep it Bill Jones. Okay, yeah. now you see Mazishi. <laughs> I see Mazishi. <laughs> In your Okay. Um, I'm the film producer, okay. 18 Hours, and a co founder of the company that made the film Rock Pictures. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'd like to talk to both of you since you're the producer and the writer. Um, tell us more about the 18 Hour film and what really this film is about, because I know. From uh, what we watched, it's derived from that experience of Alex Mad... Mag, M I, I, I keep mispronouncing his name. Uh, the late Alex, who lost his life after a harrowing experience in an ambulance for 18 hours without immediate emergency um, care. So I read the article on the dailies, actually it was the Daily Nation. This is 2015. And when I read that article, it really touched my heart and I asked myself, how could such an incident happen in our country? And more so now a middle income country. So um, I got in touch with my team, uh, Bill and Phoebe, the producer as well. And you we are like, how or what role do we have to play in changing our country? Um, the best thing we could do is make a film about that story. So 18 Hours is an inspiration from that story but it's still a story about many other people who undergo such cases where they're denied admission or where they don't receive emergency medical care. So this is a film honoring Alex, honoring Brian uh, Odiambo, who was the paramedic on, on the ambulance, yeah. but as well honoring everyone who has experienced this. And in, 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 my, in, my, in my thoughts, every Kenyan has experienced an emergency situation, either you, yourself, your family member, or your friend. True. And I mean, speaking about Brian, who was uh, the paramedic on the ambulance, you played Brian. Yes, um, because the character Zach is uh, more or less molded from um, Brian, the, the paramedic. So there's, a lot, of, there's a, a lot of the stuff that I had to put together to come up with um, the character of Zach was a lot to do with a lot of research on um, paramedics. I didn't get the chance to interact with him, but um, we had several conversations about, about the story with uh, Kevin yeah. um, before we started shooting. And even interestingly enough, on my radio show, I happened to, I, I talked about that Look, story. He just, he just, he I, just, he just, this he was just, not a plug. This is just a thought that occurred to okay, me. Okay, fine, Nick. 
Nick is a radio presenter as well. He's on XFM every single morning, right? All right, moving on to please. 6 to 10 in the morning, no big yeah. deal. You know, yeah. 105.5. However, yeah. um, so I remember even when I talked about the story, it was, it was just one of those things that you don't, you don't forget easily. So when we were having all these conversations with Kevin about how to approach the character, I did a lot of, I, did, I remember watching a lot of um, paramedics documentaries and we actually had an opportunity to work with emergency healthcare service yeah. people um, on set and even before. So there was a lot of realism when it comes to how we were, how we approached the characters and actually how we executed it. How was the experience for you, Brian? Um, the experience was great, to be honest. Um, I, I have to say, this guy has a lot of passion and, you know, like, it's, it's addictive because uh, immediately I got onto the project, I could identify his passion and I could straight away tell that this is a group of people who really want to make a difference with their work. And immediately we started, it was challenging because uh, moving back and forth between uh, Machakos and uh, different other locations, but the passion that we could see in each other like really kept pushing us you wow. know like even when things got hard uh, during the production so it was it was a really good experience and i cannot wait for you guys to watch this film oh, wow and we can't wait for you guys to watch it because it's premiering first year and these guys haven't even seen the trailer yet <laughs> but <laughs> yeah but um they sue who acted as alex's wife how was that for you um, it was very, very emotional. I remember Anjue uh, approached me with the script a year before and I looked at it and I remembered the story uh, in 2015 and I think it trended on social media yeah. and knowing that Alex actually had a wife, you know, and um, being putting myself in that um, situation and in her pain and you know shooting a film is off sequence so we yeah. did it for um, uh, almost, I think almost uh, a couple of days or Three, three weeks, I think. So um, constantly being in that um, character and bringing out the pain and the emotions, I can't really give it away, <laughs> but you'd have to watch the film. And, and yeah, I really it. wanted yeah, to, to really understand that. And I really wanted to be a part of this film because I think um, it, it actually leads to, to conversation, yeah. you know, about this yeah. delicate matter, uh, yeah. about our health system in Kenya. Yeah. Because I could not really understand how a person is saved, is put in an ambulance by a paramedic yeah, and, and then has to wait for 18 hours and then we lose him. Mm. So that for me was really painful and I was like, I have to play this role <laughs> and I have to play it and truthfully, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, um, the movie is striking up conversation and striking up debate. You know, our healthcare system is, is not the best. Um, we've had very many issues, you know, nurses are on strike, clinical officers are also joining the strike and doctors are also on strike and it's, it's I mean, it's, it's collapsed basically because we, we all have to see what's going on, you, you have to experience it to see what's going on and just really feel it. Do you feel the government is really supportive of, you know, efforts to um, improve public health care? Trying, because we have an emergency, a, a health act. 2017, May 2017, which has certain clauses. We talk about emergency healthcare in the country. Um, one of the clauses say that, um, I know most Kenyans don't know about this. Yeah? Oh, yeah. One of the clauses states that um, every Kenyan is entitled to emergency healthcare. Yeah? And every, all medical institutions, both private and public, are obligated to provide emergency care to all patients. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. in the constitution. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually right. it's actually a, a health bill that, that is supposed to be a, a health act that is there, and making this film is was something that we wanted to do to get that message out there and educate people on the importance of emergency healthcare in the country, yeah. the health policy, and yeah. And people don't actually know that this is their right. That yeah. you can, if you're in an in an emergency situation, whether you're going to a public or private hospital, they ought to give you that service. Yeah, and and if and if they don't do it and yet they're in the position to do it, then they are liable to. Yeah, and you could yeah. actually sue. You could have to sue them if they don't do it. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and, and for us as well, adding to that, the film is not here to, to, to punish anyone. Yeah. That's not our purpose. You're not here to, to, to point fingers yes. or to remind people of such a horrible ordeal. The film is here to 
inspire us or to remind us something bad happened, these have been the improvements since then and how can we move forward mm -hmm. in a better way. So the film, uh, in case someone is wondering, the film is not here to, you're to not attack. attack. You're, you're not attacking anyone. anyone. Yeah. <laughs> you're telling people, okay, this happened, let's not forget it. Yes. That's the most important thing. But from then to now, what are the changes that have happened? And as Bill said, we now have a health act. Yeah. Now the question is, can we implement it? Can we push it? Can we let Kenyans know that these are your rights? Awesome. Oh, man. Sorry. That's what it is. I'm just so channeling in my hip hop, you know. <laughs> I yeah. own it. I own it. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, the real OG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does it feel to watch yourself? Whoa, because I have waited to watch this for so long. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the coolest thing is? Yeah. That you included my favorite part. Which is? I, 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 I won't say it. You I won't, I'm not going to share it. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> glad. I'm just glad that it's you guy, my guy, banana. It's because it's because of one word that I said in that scene, uh -huh. and that's the one. Share. Uh, follow me on Instagram as Nick uh -huh. and I shall reveal the answer in, in a couple of days. Nick is a socialite. Nick is an upcoming socialite. Anyway, how does it feel to see you to watch yourself? I think it takes me back. Yeah. It's always hard for an actor, first of all, to watch um, <laughs> to watch yourself. But but um, it takes me back to when we were shooting. <laughs> I'm not shaking. Yeah, but it was very emotional, you yeah. know. And um, I'm just glad that we have this film, and I can't wait for everyone to watch it. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So let's see what y'all are saying out there on Twitter. Na cheki. Um, there's Mwangi Modoni who says Nia Jambi. A uh, Mambo VP, uh, Nonsinzi, big up yourself. She says we look awesome. Yeah, there's a guy called Ndirito who says he can't wait to watch um, 18 hours uh, film. Then there's it's Salem. He says, as a film student, seeing that movie now, I can be inspired. We're going places. How does that make you guys feel? Wonderful. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Especially the producers. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because they did some really good work on it. Yes, oh, so they ought to pay you more. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind in that share. But I think, I, think, I think this is going to inspire so many filmmakers in um, the country. Like guys who are already making film and guys who are looking to becoming filmmakers. Yeah. Because we need to set a quality level up there. And I, and I think... We did it. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. And it was actually, you know, there's always been debate about South Africa being or offering better locations than mm. Kenya. What do you feel about that? Do we, is it, is it that we don't have good locations, which I believe Kenya is such a beautiful country, yeah. or is it that we are really highly taxed? May I? Yeah, go. Brian, go ahead. This is the thing. You see, whatever is going on in South Africa, it's not that they're better than us. They're just better prepared for film mm -hmm. than us. You understand? Mm -hmm because they will offer you all kinds of tax rebates yeah. and all kinds of things that will lower your budget in terms of a film mm -hmm. just for you to go and shoot there, you know, and prioritize on South African nationals as mm -hmm. part of their crew and cast. You understand? But yeah. here in Kenya, if everyone wants Kitu Kidogo, you know, at every office that you have to go to, it becomes very difficult, you understand? So a lot of things in our film policy have to be changed and improved. Yeah, awesome. yeah, because we need to be properly represented at festivals and take film as a serious business that it is. Because there's huge, huge employment opportunities for the youth in True. film True. in all sorts of fields. Not just in acting, but in crew. I mean, there's a lot that goes on on a set. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm really happy for 18-hour film crew and, you know, everybody else. I'm very happy because at least you offered Nick a chance to earn some, you know, some more. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's been assigned to be a socialite for so many years. Anyway, moving on to... I'm me. on the come-up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the come-up. Right, so like, anyways, when, when, when and where can we watch the movie if we want to watch it? So the movie... A uh, funny story is that uh, we were to premiere the movie on the 27th of October. Mm -hmm. Then yesterday, 27th. There was, yeah, then <laughs> yesterday there was the political announcement, yeah. which has now changed our date. Our date is 10th November. So that's the world premiere of the film. It's okay. happening here in Nairobi mm -hmm. at Prestige Plaza. Mm -hmm. Then seven days later, the film opens in all cinemas across the country. Right. So from Garden City to... Kisumu to Mombasa, everywhere, everywhere. All, all, all the eight cinemas across the country, the film will be showing there. So for us, is if you liked what you see, you want to be part of 
a movement that we are creating come then to the come out to the cinemas yeah. and watch the film. Yeah. yeah. Tutakuja. <laughs> Tutakuja premiere, tutava magowns, ka Hollywood, unajua? For sure. So, um, Glam squad, nini, nini, yeah. Hollywood, right? For sure. And also talking of the premiere, we've partnered with two organizations. Yeah. We've partnered with e Emergency Medicine Kenya Foundation with Dr. Benjamin, um, who basically um, look, after, look at emergency care services through education and research. We've also partnered with um, Chapter One, previously known as Kenyan Dialogue Project, right. um, with Mr. Yurungu Houghton. Um, basically, it's a civil society organization which helps in um, catalyzing and supporting and, and promoting public awareness and, and dialogues, which are, are research-based. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. This is a very important film that we all need to watch once it's out next. Um, the premiere is happening 10th of November at the Prestige Plaza. It's very important. Healthcare is passionate to me and it should be to you because at any time, any time, we could be in an emergency situation. So remember to catch it. This is 18 hours and big up everybody in studio. Big up yourselves, man. Congratulations. Yes. I big up my brother. My brother is standing 11 today. Oh, he's standing 11. Oh, oh, he's, called Michael 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 he's called Michael Karaoke. Michael Karaoke. Yeah. Happy birthday, Michael. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you! Yeah! My brother is no longer a child. Yo, he's in. No, I was just going to dodge. <laughs> I was going to say something really silly. Anyways, so you guys. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And the beautiful yeah. lady, thank you so much. We'll catch the film. I know, Brian, you want to send salams. Chap, chap, araka, raka. Yes, I'm sending salams, first of all, to TEFB. Too early for Bud's crew. They're yeah. still pulling an all-nighter, doing rehearsals. We're doing a show on the 28th next okay. week, Thursday. I right. want to say hi to my mom and dad. I love <laughs> you, mom and dad. <laughs> love you, sisters. I'm right. done. Shout out to the folks, man. That's our, that's